Italy has quietly taken a decisive step toward turning its surface fleet into a regional strike force. The Teseo Mark II-E, MBDA's long-range multimode anti-ship and land attack missile, is not merely another weapon in the inventory. It is a force multiplier that redefines how the Italian Navy can project power across the Mediterranean, protect sea lines of communication, and influence crises ashore without committing large expeditionary forces. Technically, Tessio Mark IIe is a clear evolution from classical anti-ship designs. The missile couples extended range with a robust guidance suite, mid-course updates via satellite or data link, a multimode seeker in the terminal phase, and low observable sea skimming profiles to reduce detection and engagement windows. Range estimates and public reporting place the weapon well beyond horizon shot distances, in the order of several hundred kilometers, which means modern surface combatants can strike targets ashore or at sea from safe standoff positions. ECCM features and a software-defined seeker allow in-flight retargeting and improved resilience against jamming and decoys. In operational terms, that translates into a missile that can conduct anti-access and area denial missions while retaining the flexibility to perform precision strikes against coastal infrastructure, airfields, and logistics hubs. The platforms chosen to field TESOM K2E are significant. Italy plans to integrate the missile on its FREM EVO frigates, PPA vessels, and future DDX destroyer classes. These are not legacy platforms. FREM EVOs are modular, stealthier, and built for the demands of 21st century C4 ISR integration. PPAs bring advanced command and modular payload carriage. DDX promises a high-end surface combatant with substantial onboard processing and launcher capacity. The result is a distributed strike architecture. Smaller, more numerous ships can carry potent reach, complicating an adversary's targeting calculus and imposing hard choices about sea control and convoy routing. Tactics enabled by Tessio MK2E emphasize salvos, networking, and sensor fusion. In a typical employment concept, standoff ISR assets, maritime patrol aircraft, UAVs, and shipborne radars locate targets and feed tracks into a command node. Missile salvos are launched from dispersed platforms, using mid-course data links to refine flight paths and terminal seekers to discriminate targets among cluttered littoral environments. Coupled with cooperative engagement from airborne EW assets and electronic protection suites aboard the launch platforms, such a pattern allows Italy to generate effects at range with limited exposure to return fire. In crisis scenarios, the mere presence of a distributed TESO armed patrol force can provide early cursive options below the threshold of direct intervention. Comparatively, TCO mk 2 e sits in a competitive but distinct niche among modern anti-ship land attack missiles. It differs from classic systems such as Exocet or Legacy Harpoon by emphasizing much greater standoff reach and multi-mode terminal discrimination. Compared with NSM, Tessio's architecture trades some of NSM's extreme stealth features for a dual-mode seeker and broader land attack capability. Compared with American LRASM, Tessio is likely more cost-effective while providing comparable data link and sensor fusion functions, albeit with differing export and integration profiles. The verdict is not about a single best missile. Rather, Tessio mk 2 e offers an attractive balance between range, seeker sophistication, and platform integration, especially for navies that require sea-to-land options in addition to anti-ship lethality. The strategic consequences are immediate and layered. First, Italy moves from narrowly coastal defense toward a regional strike posture. FREM and PPA patrols can threaten hostile sea traffic or coastal nodes at ranges that previously required larger ships, aviation, or submarines. That capability is valuable in contested littorals like the Central Mediterranean, where Libya, energy infrastructure, migration routes, and narrow choke points create complex security dynamics. Second, 
Tessio MK2E enhances deterrence. An adversary contemplating coercive maritime operations must now consider dispersed, long-range missile threat vectors in its operational planning. Third, the weapon strengthens Italy's bargaining power within NATO and the EU. It is a tangible capability that can be contributed to coalition maritime campaigns or used as leverage in diplomatic signaling. Yet the new capability brings proportional challenges. The political threshold for use rises when a naval missile can strike land target targets far inland. Legal and escalation considerations must be integrated into doctrines and rules of engagement. Operationally, Tessio's effectiveness depends on a resilient sensor backbone and data link security. Without dependable ISR and secure mid-course updates, long-range missiles risk wasting ordnance or being neutralized by decoys and jammers. Supply chain and sustainment issues matter as well. Life cycle management, war stock availability, and maintenance demand robust industrial backing to avoid capability gaps at times of crisis. Defensive counters are already mature and proliferating. Modern frigates and corvettes increasingly mount layered point defense systems and soft kill suites that complicate terminal engagements. Adversaries can counter salvos with dispersed maneuvers, aerial decoys, and electronic attack. Submarine and air assets offer asymmetric counters as well. A submarine lurking in choke points negates much of the surface missile threat by forcing closer approaches or imposing defensive escorts. Effective TCO employment, therefore, will rely on integrated tactics. Missile salvos need escorting ASW measures, cooperative EW, and air defense cover to maximize attrition on target. On the industrial side, Tessio MCAT-2E consolidates MBDA and Italian shipbuilders' positions in the European market. A domestically supported exportable weapon creates opportunities for political influence through defense diplomacy. Partner navies, whether in Eastern Europe, North Africa, or Southeast Asia, could find a Tessio-equipped FREM or PPA attractive, especially if the missile can be tailored to national rules of engagement and export regimes. Looking forward, TESO MK2E is emblematic of a broader trend. Navies prefer adaptable strike packages that turn even modest platforms into strategic actors. For Italy, the missile complements a broader modernization arc. New frigates, advanced submarines, and layered air defenses, enabling Rome to punch above its weight across the Mediterranean. Success will be measured not only in test firings and fielding dates, but by how seamlessly Tessio integrates into naval doctrine, ISR webs, and coalition frameworks. In short, Tesso and Katu-E changes the question Italy must answer about its navy. It shifts the debate from how many large ships can we afford to how many distributed shooters, networked and resilient, do we need to shape outcomes? If integrated professionally and sustained politically, Tessio Mankatu E will let Italy project credible, precise maritime power at a scale and distance befitting a 21st century Mediterranean strategy.